Namaste. Welcome to my podcast. All right, this one has been tough. This podcast has happened after a lot of effort. In the end, it took some serious trolling to get today's guest on the podcast. If there is one guy who has single-handedly annoyed left-wing gyanis in the online world, it is my guest today. His Twitter bio claims that he is a well-known expert on nothing. Opinions are totally personal. RT sometimes even my own tweets are not endorsements. and he's as unbiased as any unpop as any popular unpopular so called journalist also today joining us for a special appearance coming out of nowhere i guess out of the sky is one more guest so first of all let's talk about our first guest welcome to the podcast rahul hi hello everyone <clears throat> and you may know him on twitter as at gappistan radio welcome to the podcast sandeep thank you very much okay now rahul mm. before uh, we get into or we pretend to get into serious discussions mm-hmm. i want you to tell a bit about yourself to the listeners okay apart from trolling on twitter and claiming that i have uh, dashing good looks I I well I grew up in Patna I my parents thought that uh, I would become an engineer uh, which I never became <laughs> uh, uh yeah I mean uh, because you know I wanted to be an engineer only if I get into IITs so that I couldn't crack because of chemistry so uh, I started you know as happens with any bihari that if you can't become an engineer you have to become an is officer so and for is officer you need to have at least a degree certificate so i joined a college <laughs> however uh, i'd never really attempted for any is thing during college i somehow became interested in uh, words you know like uh, while i was preparing for iit i was very much interested in maths and that's why uh, even the graduation i did a bsc in mathematics however while studying maths i became attracted towards uh, words and i don't know how but somehow it led me to getting interested in journalism so after finishing ma- my graduation from patna university in mathematics and uh, all of mathematics of which i have forgotten especially calculus I went for a one year post graduate diploma course in journalism uh from Indian Inst- Institute of Mass Communication so this is a uh, uh what you call autonomous uh, institute set up by ministry of INB and I did my uh, course in uh, radio and television journalism so uh, well it was quite good i was in a new city that's delhi after being raised up in patna and i liked the city i liked uh, you know all the new experience and then i got a job also uh which was in sahara sahara <laughs> pranam yeah everybody so, please do a sahara pranam to rahul right now <laughs> right so if if it were a video pod not exactly podcast or whatever it is called there is a video of me doing sahara pranam also on which i have disabled comments so <laughs> <laughs> so well sahara was actually you know but it was a decent experience you know uh, i i got uh, to understand how television journalism works and uh, i got a supportive boss as well so even though i worked for two and a half years i got a lot of uh, opportunities there you know i i even discharged uh, duties of a bulletin producer you know like oh. uh, you you pick up the entire bulletin decide what what is go, what are going going to be the headlines and stuff in the last 5 or 6 months i was even anchoring yeah which is where you know the sahara pranam comes so it was a decent experience at the same time it was horrible experience as well because then i realized what journalism really was nice yeah so i realized that it is just another job where you are not paid well uh, so that people on top can be paid well uh, and uh, also there were some stuff uh, now that you know this is on record i cannot say but there were things which were uh, very troubling and uh, basically i realized it's far farce <coughs> you, you you have seen uh, people live right yeah. many many people have seen it's not satire it's reality actually you know the way tv journalism works 
so uh, disillusioned with all these and uh, primarily disillusioned because of my salary i decided that if i have to do just another job i would rather do a, you know get into a job that's decently paying and for that i decided to study further i took cat uh, my aim behind uh, taking up cat was that i might land in mica uh, mudra institute of communications in ahmedabad and i would get back in media because even though i didn't like journalism i liked media i liked this industry i liked this idea of communicating to people to you know maybe in some some way influencing them or or having a conversation with them you know that that's something i i i liked uh, so i wanted to be in media uh, with a better salary with a better job <laughs> uh, and b- better scope uh, but uh, uh, fortunately or unfortunately i landed up in iim ahmedabad fortunately because obviously it's uh, one of the best institutes and those uh, years i spent uh, on campus are wonderful i got to learn a lot inside the class outside the class unfortunately because it made me even more confused you know so uh, while i was already confused about journalism <laughs> while my mba i got even more confused what i want to do uh, initially i also wanted to be an investment banker and all that Uh, having you know learned all the uh, stories about how your uh, seniors are earning you know big money and all and soon i realized that neither i have the skills nor the skin to be an investment banker and uh, you know one thing led to the another and uh, one professor at time amdabad very known for you know brain washing students into going for entrepreneurship his name is uh, professor sunil handa Uh, so he also had an effect on you know me and uh, one of my uh, dorm mates that's a hostel mate and we decided to try out entrepreneurship in the second year so basically try to do something of our own so we have you know I'm, i think i'll uh, you know it's a very long story actually so <laughs> our first thing that we tried to do was uh, to finally set up an ethanol factory in bihar Oh, nice. <laughs> you know and it it's it's it was obviously very stupid thing uh, because uh, we you know none of us uh, me and my batchmate uh, rather dorm mate we didn't know uh, shit about uh, how ethanol is produced or anything we didn't have any capital or anything however professor handa was so supportive that you know he made us uh, go visit the sugar cane uh, sugar fact uh, what you call yeah sugar factory basically Uh, in Bardoli and all that in Ahmedabad, he gave his own vehicle, and we went there. How sugar uh, works, you know, because that's after that ethanol is extracted. Yeah. Uh, I am damn sure that uh, Professor Handa knew that we 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 are unable. We, we are there is no way we can set up an ethanol factory. However, in retrospect, he was basically you know uh, making us discover, get the confidence that we can do something. not only that uh, nitish kumar happened to visit uh, i am amdabad once and we even presented uh, you know this b plan to him uh, among other stuff uh, so he had a small meeting with some students from bihar and uh, later on uh, i have personally met uh, he he had set up a sugarcane ministry as well oh, you nice. know so i had met the minister saying that you know we can we want to set up a ethanol factory we even you know he even told me uh, the minister that go and uh, get the land acquisition forms and all that it was so you know absurd in retrospect but that whole thing gave us a confidence that no you know if you if you set out to achieve something you can there are people out there who are willing to help you and and that gave us a little confidence that we can do something you know apart from just making b plans and all that by the way this idea of uh, having an ethanol factory was actually a business plan thing <laughs> you know in in all in all in mbas you have those business plan competitions right yeah, yeah. so even though I, i i was not a part of making this business plan my uh, batchmate was kartik lakshman uh, about whom we would come to later <laughs> so he and some of his mates made this business plan and it won some competition somewhere so we we thought that okay this plan is you know worth pursuing now very soon we realized that this is not going to uh, be a reality 
Uh, however, by that time, and I think that was the motive of Professor Handa, we were bitten by entrepreneurial bug. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to do something of our, of our own. Definitely ethanol factory was uh, out of question, but what? And that's where our first venture we uh, thought of, uh, which was a cricket stock exchange. Uh, it was a virtual uh, gaming thing in which you trade uh, Sachin Tendulkar's and Shoei Bakhtar's and all that. This is 2007 I'm talking about, or rather 2006, late 2006 when we were conceptualizing it. Uh, my plan was actually to have a political stock exchange. You know, being a journalist, I was always more interested in politics and all that. Uh, so I proposed, uh, you know, my Karthik and all that, that let's have a political stock exchange because in 2007, February or somewhere, uh, UP elections were due. And I, uh, and because I worked in Sahara and I was actually in the Uttar Pradesh division of their uh, news, I was, I thought it's a big thing. But, uh, you know, that's where uh, uh, my host, hostel mate said that uh, nobody is interested in your Uttar Pradesh elections. <laughs> you might be interested because, because you, you were a, uh, a journalist only one month down the uh, uh, after the up elections were the 2007 cricket world cup he said that okay if you have to come up with a stock exchange idea uh, why go for politicians go for cricketers yeah and it made sense because all the ranking of cricketers were based on their actual on field performance yes whereas in uh, uh, so far as cricket is concerned you are emotionally involved with many people you know even if that person is not performing he still could be very valuable. So how do you capture this sentiment? You know, so this is more or less like stock exchange. You know, even if that particular company might not be doing uh, well financially, there are some stuff sentiments that you know that yeah. people talk and that Mahal. yeah. <laughs> Mahal. <laughs> so that that was our pitch, and we uh, went ahead with cricket stock exchange. Uh, even now, if you Google Cricket Stock Exchange and my name, some uh, news reports uh, about uh, that will you can still retrieve. And back in 2007, it was a big news, actually. You know, we were covered on front page of Times of India. Uh, we were on uh, prime time uh, on uh, India Today and somewhere. And that was called Headlines Today then, I think. Yeah, yeah Headlines right. Today. Right. And some some other uh, news channels as well. And it we, we had a very decent... Uh, uh, marketing for it, uh, PR for it. And then uh, I we got uh, into an agreement with one of the news channels that they will produce a show out of it, you know, so half an hour show out of it, all all their guys, you know, like these Sandeep Patils and Gavaskas and all that who come as uh, uh, TV hosts, uh, not host guests rather, on, on these uh, news channels, they would become stock analysts and they mm. will say, ye karo, wo karo. So we thought our first venture is off to a flying start. You know, like it will have a <laughs> to a half an hour show on national uh, TV and, uh, you know, these Gavaskas and all that would be discussing it. But uh, Destiny had something else. 2007 World Cup, if you remember, it was... Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. The West Indies one, right? Uh, was it in West Indies? Yeah, it yeah, was in yeah. West Indies. Right, I right, just right. remember yeah. uh, uh, it was what? Against Sri Lanka was the final game? Yeah. yeah I, 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 we lost against Bangladesh, I think. Right. And uh, we lost... Then against Sri Lanka. Right. And we almost lost against Bermuda also, I think. Or was no, that... No, no, no. no I, this, this was... Bermuda was the saving grace for Right, us. right, right. Yeah, we could hit... Some, but basically, it was horrible. We were kicked out in first first round. Yeah. And before that, obviously, everyone was hooked onto our website. Even, you know, many Pakistanis were... Uh, had become uh, the registered user of our website. Mm -hmm. And Pakistan had similar horrible experience. I think they lost to Bangladesh. Ireland. 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 Yeah. Ireland. Sorry. So Sandeep is the best person actually. You know, he is a walking encyclopedia on... Uh, actually, I was uh, going mm -hmm. through 2007 World Cup scorecards today after <laughs> For some reason. <laughs> okay. So maybe, you know, this because we were to talk today. So he is there to correct the facts. But the mahal was that both India and Pakistan had a huh. And both were kicked down in the first round. Yeah. Add to that, Bob Woolmer died. Yeah, yeah, huh? right? yeah. yeah the so scans, huh? cricket became like, you know, nobody wanted to glorify it, you know, in those two, three weeks or maybe coming a couple of months. So the news channel that we had entered into an agreement uh, where this show was supposed to be made and our website would have got national publicity on a regular basis. 
they decided that they are not going to do it because people are already hating what's happening on uh, mm. on the field and nobody would like this glorification of cricket you know where you are uh, doing all these things so uh, we had got our licensing money although you know so they had given us some money uh, so that they can use our data and website to create the show uh, obviously they couldn't have asked the money back because it was their editorial decision to drop the show so we had the money but we didn't had the entrepreneurial uh, you know understanding that this money should be invested invested back into you know our product and we should grow it even though uh, our main television partner has backed out coming from uh, maybe middle class first generation trying to be entrepreneurial we thought that uh, okay we have got the money we immediately divided the money amongst ourselves and we paid back our educational loans mm. <laughs> you know so we were left with nothing uh, money was gone in paying back our personal loans in fact you know that was our first uh, uh, lesson that we learned professor handa tried to teach us we couldn't understand it he said that once you are entrepreneur you would always be in debt yes you know so but coming from that uh, background where everyone in your family is are uh, you know earning people salaried people debt is something you don't want to hear mm. right so we immediate thing that we did was to pay off the debt educational loans that we had and we were left with no money and the website was dying uh then one us based company gaming company came and they said that okay we want to buy this website so we got another trench of money <laughs> so they bought the website but they made a mess of uh, out of it so the website is obviously died soon after but we made money that gave us the confidence that okay if we want to do something of our own we can survive after that uh okay i something or the other happened i went to my own way and i started faking news you know it was not obviously it was not so sad uh, <laughs> the way that i started faking news uh, while on campus i i became hooked on to the onion and you know the us news satire website uh, uh, this is ironic that while i was a journalist i had never heard of the onion but while on campus uh, you know you explore a lot of things when you get free internet on high speed and i explore i came to know about this and i liked the idea so much and i always thought that uh, you know something you, you we are more political we are more happening a country than us uh, so political satire here should work and and it's not like political satire was not alien to this uh, country you know in, in hindi har shankar parsai shilal shukla and all that social and political satire they have written very good and it it should work so i had i thought that something like the onion should work in india uh but i had never written a piece of satire in my life you know while on on campus in those two years of my mba i had written just one thing for my batchmates in which i had made basically satirical comments about uh, news channels uh and that was the only news satire piece that i had written but somehow i thought that okay let me try let's see and that that's how i started anonymously i called gave myself a rather lame name pagal patrakar you know <laughs> <laughs> and i started uh, faking news uh, so so that was actually my first uh, uh, brush with writing satire it clicked uh, in retrospect obviously i i would have first mover advantage as well but uh, i have to be modest and say that okay i did some uh, you know good shit as well so it it uh, it started creating buzz I, i i used to choose topic which were about journalist or which about mba community or the engineering community <clears throat> while doing my mba i could understand what works among engineers because you know most of my batchmates were engineers so i could target these sections and you know my articles uh, continued to be viral then obviously i attracted talent like sandeep you know he started uh, contributing uh, to faking news and I, i i kind of realized that you know it has the potential to become uh, uh, a business um, to be honest i i had started it just as a time pass to see if i can write satire or not and also because you know being a journalist once you are a journalist you are always a journalist you want to comment something about politics and all that so i thought okay political satire was a nice way to comment about politics so that's how faking news started and once it became popular i thought that uh, it can become a business as well 
<clears throat> I was first approached by Times Group, who uh, expressed interest in buying out, uh, but uh, that thing didn't work out. Uh, later on i started approaching various media houses including times and uh, you know uh, final offer i had from two three groups and finally i went ahead with network 18 and uh, well after that network 18 was uh, network 18 that acquired faking news and then network 18 was acquired by reliance and then i got bored of uh, you know <laughs> various things and now i obviously i'm no longer with faking news sandeep is running it and i don't know what the question was yeah you had asked me to introduce and fuck it's 20 minutes that's I okay that's the beauty of podcasting see mm. that's okay okay and in fact i haven't talked about that okay i have le- i left faking news and then uh, you know i became uh, as i told you once a journalist always a journalist so i wanted to go back to political commenting and all that op india was something you know was started by my uh, brother actually and i was uh, helping him and then uh, we got these two guys boy blunder and baksala on board and uh, you know i uh, that's that's what i'm currently doing i'm trying to uh, see this thing grow so yeah so that's okay it. now i have a question <clears throat> actually this is for both of you obviously rahul you can take it first and then sandeep you answer this now obviously faking news is all about humor and satire and politics and uh, we live in a country where uh, sentiments are like tinde but tinde but i mean everybody's sentiments keep getting hurt you know there is a fucking hashtag every day you know somebody's sentiment is hurt i don't know what fucking morons we have in this country but now obviously it's usually self censorship whenever i mean even let, let us say even when i'm thinking of writing something uh, or about anything whether it's religion or whether it's caste or whether it's politics in general you know we self censor a lot of mm. times we self censor so w- what is your take when it comes to politics especially political satire like i remember shekhar suman ka show hua karta tha movers and shakers right now uh, you know uh, shekhar suman would never cross a line Mm-hmm. when it comes to making fun of politicians although i think he made a lot of fun like i i remember his mimicry of lalu prasad yadav and all that uh, it was all in good Vajpai humor mm-hmm. yeah even vajpai so <laughs> yeah so but where, where what do you think is the overall scenario so rahul you take it first and then sandeep when it comes to this censorship uh, in the political sphere satire mm. in the political sphere do you think there is censorship in india or i think the censorship is more on the religious and uh, the other belt and in actually politicians are quite open about it yeah that's true i although i think sandeep could answer it better because you know he is more active these days i am almost a journalist again now and mm. a politician also <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so but i think you know when when it comes to satire uh, political satire i don't think uh, you know censorship from uh, political parties or political leaders are there their supporters obviously are always after your life Achha. you know and uh, like uh, even while running uh, uh, faking news we had a brush with uh, supporters of almost everyone there is uh, uh, one article sandeep wrote about uh, should should we disclose names or what <laughs> no we can't disclose names but you know there was some uh, you know uh, uh, an mp uh, and uh, their office wrote that you know this is uh, defamatory and all that a congress mp that uh, definitely i would take liberty to say because if i don't say everybody was assume it's bjp <laughs> <laughs> so so it was a congress mp you know his office say if it's a defamatory you have to take it down sandeep had written i uh, reached out to him then obviously he hadn't joined us uh, then there there was some guy you know like akhilesh yadav ka fan who had some problem but at such official i don't think politicians themselves I, i you know i have no idea whether these guys uh, ask their supporters to go after you know that's assumption many people make however i would get i I, w- i would give benefit of doubt to politicians of every hue their chamchas are more you know uh, over excited to censor uh, censor things and people think that you know pol- a politician is there it's not like our politicians are very uh, willing to take a joke on them but i don't think i mean in personal experience i don't think uh, politics is a no go area uh, it's more of uh, the socio uh, thing you know religion caste obviously or bollywood salman khan ke upar joke bhi maar sakta hai yeah but again i i think that's also you know uh, 
I mean, in uh, while running faking news, I uh, I, I encountered uh, you know censorship uh, attempts by fans and uh, office uh, guys of politicians. Most of which many people don't uh, realize is by corporates. They arm twist you a lot. Mm. Yeah, brands and all that. You can't make mock brands. Uh, you know all this. Some some corporates are really sensitive about that. Again, I cannot disclose it because Sandeep is here and he is still on part of payrolls. So, you know, so they are there with Bollywood and politics is mostly their fans and supporters who get hyper, mm. you know, real arm twisting comes from corporates, brands, and obviously this legal arm twisting, which you are, you have to, you have to self censor and you have to not cross a line is the religion and caste because you don't want to be in a jail for a joke. And that's, that's more likely to happen when you involve a, you know, uh, a religion or a caste angle rather than a politi- political angle. Yeah, all I can say is, you know, I, I don't know, before anybody in the right wing is going to go after me, but <laughs> sometimes I sit in the corner and I feel bad for the makers of Padmavati. <laughs> and it happens with Listen, everyone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to feel bad for people. Boss, matlab, ya to abhi main koi bhi concept lunga aur usko internet pe dal dunga ki bhai ye bana raha hu. Hmm. Kisko bura lag raha hai. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, we digress. So Sandeep, what's your take on this? Wow, how, what? Is there a line we can oh. cross or not? See, as far as political satire is concerned, I feel safest when I'm making fun of politicians. Wow. That is the safest place to end. Because at worst, what is going to happen? Uh, some, if you uh, target the government, uh, some Modi fan will put two comments, that's all. Or some Kejriwal fan will say two comments, that's all. Or uh, a Rahul Gandhi fan will not even bother to comment. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be like, our leader is just a joke. Hai. <laughs> so, uh, that's the thing. Uh, political satire is the safest place right now because, uh, of course, as uh, Rahul said, religion is a total no-go area because that can put you in prison. People have seen court cases and have no interest in facing any such cases. <laughs> and, uh, caste is, again, very tricky because... Uh, uh, even if I write about it, it will seem that I'm, uh, see, I come from a dominant caste in Haryana. So if I write about it, it will seem that I'm either being uh, too apologetic for the upper caste or too, uh, you know, condescending attitude uh, uh, towards the lower caste. So I skip out of it. Uh, uh, and after that, um, like I said, Bollywood is free for all. Bollywood, mm. I don't care. <laughs> so the Bollywood and uh, political satire is fine. Uh, it, uh, it never crosses my mind that I may offend someone. Or Offending individuals in India is fine. Mm. Offending groups is where you end up in a problem. Mm. That is where the problem happens. Uh, and it's not just individual. It's not that they will hate me or anything. That is fine if someone hates me. The problem is a legal problem. I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> that is the... Uh, I really hate jail. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, other people... I mean, I only... Uh, uh, because you see, uh, you see some uh, uh, comedians apologizing to certain groups in the past. And, and I, read, I find it ridiculous. And I never want to apologize. Yeah. Yet, I don't want to go to jail. So, I avoid those topics altogether. So, I avoid both those things. Yeah, it's sad. And that's why people like me, you know, I get a, a raw deal in all of this is because I believe the one thing that you have to go after the most in India is religion. I mean, I, I do. I mean, and I you say in terms of, uh, of uh, negative comments and hatred, like recently uh, uh, we published an article that uh, on Pakistan uh, misbehaving with the Kulbushan Yadav, Yadav's family. Hmm. So we published that in mocking Pakistan. But we got like 100 negative comments. How do you write on such a sensitive topic? Right. Are, bhaiya, we are mocking Pakistan. No, nobody will Yeah, this, this <laughs> kind of, you know, un- I don't, it's not exactly dark humor. It's it's it pure satire actually. Humor. Yeah. Just, <laughs> but people don't get it, you know, like. Uh, so that kind of thing is okay because they will just. They didn't read it. That's so I guess all. at the end of the day, there are trigger happy ha- assholes on <laughs> on every subject, and so mm. yeah, so, yeah. But you know, this is what I find very sad and very encouraging at the same time. Well, I'll tell you why it's sad. It's sad because 
I think religion needs to be criticized in every society for progress to happen. I, I believe religion, especially in, in India, and yes, I'm going to say it, all religions are not same. Some are worse than others. <laughs> and That's, this is, uh, uh, as an atheist, I say that. Sometimes I uh, I see comedy shows from uh, from England uh, where there's majority is atheist right now, 40% plus are atheist. So their comedians go what they say about religion, every religion, even if we think about it, our police will arrest us under 295A. No, it depends on this. Look, this is asymmetry in India. I mean, see, I, I am someone who is an absolutist on free speech, but I tried to make a point by going after Vishal Dadlani. Right. Jab mainne, in yeah. fact, I made it in fashion after that. Now, every person goes and files a case of 295A. Sometimes I think, what have I done? So, but when I went there, and, and I'm giving you this entire kissa, is you won't believe it. All the media people call me and say, hey, you don't tell me, you don't tell me, you don't tell me. Including the baby intellectual, uh, uh, news laundry. Wala. <laughs> Uska kisi bande ne phone to wo lo, and I'm, why I'm sharing this incident is the hypocrisy. So it is not like that because when they would call me, they would be like, okay, we want to know a bit about yourself. So I'll be like, first of all, I want to begin the conversation by saying I'm an atheist. And they would be confused. I said, why is an atheist saying my religious sentiments are hurt? I was like, that's a whole point, you asshole. That it's so stupid, this law, that anybody can say my religious sentiments are hurt. But then there is, there are religions where you are more sensitive. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't see. I mean, look at what has. I mean, uska admi ka naam bhul jata hu jo jisne Christian Church ka maza kora hai. Sanal uh, ah, Edamaraku. Edamaraku. Wo uh, banda to bhag gaya India se. Wo to reh nahi paya. Mm-hmm. Abhi, haan, main koi AIB ke humor ka fan nahi hu. I'm not saying they are bad guys or anything. But I'm telling you, AIB the way they had to grovel in front of the the pastor or the padri, whatever that was, it was ridiculous. Ab ye jayega nahi. But look at the bright side. The most positive people are politicians in India. So <laughs> that's where my hope comes yeah. from. That I can convince these people who are okay to take a joke to tell them, Bye, you have to understand your constituency. See, from uh, my point of view, the best person for humor in India, uh, who takes humor, is uh, Lalu Prasad Yadav. Every party has tried to clamp down on jokes on their leader at one point of time or the other. But Lalu has never clamped down on jokes in Bihar or any place yeah, else on point. him or anybody else. That's why I say that in terms of humor, because in the 90s he was in full power. Mm. And likes of Shekhar Suman and all were making a living of jokes yes. on him. Yes. But he never tried to cut that down or so in that term, Lalu is really good. Even Modi has to be, you know, commended on that. No, I I little digress from him. It's <laughs> because I come from Bihar. Yeah, it's true that he never tried to cut down on Lalu jokes. But what were those Lalu jokes? They were not satirical. You know, they were just, just mimicry. Yeah, they were, it was mostly mimicry. Yeah. You know, like uh, what their guys were doing. Uh, what 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 was happening in name of uh, social justice in uh, Bihar in those Janta Dal uh, uh, days? If there was a political satire on that, then obviously <laughs> uh, uh, not not only Lalu entire uh, you know SJW brigade uh, social justice warriors even they would have been uh, after your life. You know this is just like what happened uh, only a few days back in Mumbai. Yeah, you know like you you can cannot even say that violence happened. Uh, uh, in in uh, so called Dalit protest, no, you you would be asked to be ashamed. Ki tumhe tab gussa aaya tha jab unko uh, pani ne pina diya. Gu- to Varun Grover ke mein tweet dekh ke haran ho gaya tha. Manolo kya ho gaya bhai tere ko? Manolo how can you defend violence in hmm. any civilized society? I mean the basic 101 of a democracy is the moment you enter a democracy, monopoly of violence goes only to the, the state. state. And here we live in India where this is not a to accept that democracy is not a republic. That the people who are not a republic, 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 who are so it's a, it's a problem and this bothers me and 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 that's why I'll, whenever I meet people who are into satire and humor, I mean, I think Sandeep has just said it that I mean, it, it saddens me in a way that 
क्या देश है और ये वो देश है जहां पे हमने हमारे ईश्वर का मजाक उड़ाया हुआ है आई मीन मैं कोई जावेद अख्तर को सपोर्ट नहीं कर रहा हूँ मगर जावेद अख्तर ने एक बहुत अच्छा पॉइंट बोला था एक टॉक शो में जब उसने बोला था वो शोले का सीन याद है जब धर्मेंद्र भगवान शिव शिव जी थे ना शिव जी की आवाज निकाल के कर रहे हैं जावेद अख्तर ने एक्चुअली में बहुत वैलिड पॉइंट बोला था कि ये सेवेंटीज था मैं ये सीन लिख के निकल गया मैं आज नहीं लिख सकता था ये सीन मेरी धुलाई होती थी सो आई थिंक इन वी हैव रिग्रेस्ड एज ए सोसाइटी ये तो मॉन्टी पाइथन वाले भी बोले थे कि आज हम लाइफ ऑफ पाई नहीं बना सकते आई थिंक दो तीन साल पहले मॉन्टी पाइथन फॉगॉटन किसने एग्जैक्टली बोला था बस उस ट्रूप के एक आदमी ने बोला कि तो दिस इज अ ग्लोबल फिनोमिन बेसिकली यू नो वी आई अरब कल्चर बिकॉज ऑब्वियसली दे डोंट केयर अबाउट एनीबिलिटीज बट दे डेंट मेक फन ऑफ प्रॉफिट और एज सच इस्लाम I don't I at at least I don't no, recall I think they did they, they have some uh, censorship about that mm. oh yeah maybe they just don't want to die <laughs> yeah with that the level is different right i mean that, that is not legal legal trouble that is uh, i mean mar denge you know you know when when you talked about javed akhtar i, I remember what he had said uh, after that he had asked uh, you know people the person who had asked the question ki tum unke jaisa kyun ban rahe ho उनको तुम्हारे जैसा बनना चाहिए यू नो विच इज आई अग्री आई मीन ही वॉज टॉकिंग टू ए हिंदू गाई से तुम इतना ऑफेंस क्यों ले रहे हो मुसलमानों को तुम्हारी तरह बनना चाहिए इनफैक्ट ही यूज द एग्जैक्ट वर्ड कि मुसलमानों को तो तुम्हारे जैसा बनना चाहिए एंड दैट्स ऑल फाइन बट वेयर इज द इंसेंटिव टू बी लाइक हिंदू देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ इंसेंटिव टू बी इन टॉलरेंट लाइक ए मुस्लिम राइट सो प्रॉब्लम स्टार्ट देयर वो सुनने में तो काफी अच्छा लगता है बट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एनकरेज अहेवियर यू हैव टू इंसेंटिवाइज इट यहाँ तो आप तो जितने टॉलरेंट हो गए आपको आपको उतना ही नीचे दिखाया जाएगा और इनफैक्ट मैंने एक मोनोलॉग किया था इस पे और उस मोनोलॉग में मैंने इसी स्पीच का एक सबसे बड़ा पॉइंट ये रेज किया था कि ये वर्ड्स आज जावेद अख्तर ने बोले हैं नाम चेंज कर दो शक्ल चेंज कर दो मोहन भागवत को बोलने दो <laughs> और फिर देखो इस देश में बवाल क्या होगा फिर वो जो बवाल शुरू होता है कि आपने मतलब कह दिया मुसलमान मिसबिहेव करते हैं आप जनरलाइज कर रहे हो आप बिगेट हो आप फैशिस्ट हो इनफैक्ट व्हाट जावेद अख्तर डिड वाज़ द सॉफ्ट बिगेटरी ऑफ लो एक्सपेक्टेशंस कि ये तो है ही जाहिल मतलब बेसिकली जावेद अख्तर ने कहा मुसलमान जाहिल है ही जनरलाइज एन एंटायर कम्युनिटी इनफैक्ट एज ए हिंदू एंड एज एन इंडियन आई टेक ऑब्जेक्शन टू दैट भाई तू कौन है सारे मेरे देश के मुसलमानों को जाहिल बोलने वाला तू कौन है अरे मेरे घर पे होंगे कोई या मेरे दोस्त होंगे कोई मेरे दोस्त नहीं है जाहिल वो मुसलमान है तो तू कौन है इनफैक्ट मैंने तो ये क्वेश्चन पूछा था मजे की बात है लिबरल ने उसको कोई क्वेश्चन नहीं पूछा <laughs> ये एक सो कॉल्ड राइट विंगर उसको क्वेश्चन पूछ रहा था कि भाई सार मतलब दैट्स अ ब्लेटेंटली एक्चुअली ब्लेटेंट रेसिस्ट रिमार्क या चलो इस्लाम इज नॉट अ रेस मुस्लिम आर नॉट अ रेस बट इट इज अ वेरी बैड रिमार्क दैट यू हैव बेसिकली जनरलाइज एन एंटायर कम्युनिटी टू बी होली किस एंड देन ही सेज वाई डू वॉन्ट टू बी लाइक दैम आई मीन आर यू सेम ऑफ दैम आर लाइक दैट Uh, it's okay that's how it is in india now mm. i wanted to move to the next thing which is mm. what you're doing currently that is op india now mm. obviously the first question is why did you start op india matlab dimag mein aaya kaise ye khayal ki chalo op india karte hain i mean fact checking karte hain and we try to you know you know blow holes into mm-hmm. the mainstream media narrative mm. uh and then what was or what has been your overall experience a as someone who was kind of an insider but an mm. outsider and now someone who is in between i would not say you're an outsider because mm. you obviously are in media now mm. what is your view of the mainstream media when i say mainstream media i mean print and television both mm. in india so what's your view on that well to be honest top india was not started with uh, media fact checking to be you know it's uh, core uh, focus or usp you know okay. it, 
it happened after actually i uh, got uh, you know boy boy blunder on and on board and he was very particular with that and it became our usp so when when it started when my brother started it it was more of a that you know we wouldn't pretend to be neutral mm. that you know this is our ideological uh, uh, standing and we are not going to uh, you know uh, entertain the typical left liberal narrative mm. so the idea was to give uh, to have a unapologetic uh, you know uh, center right or right wing however you want to put it platform for opinions because uh, i still believe that while many people uh, you know many of these platforms try to show that they are giving uh, voices to everyone it's it's not you know i mean it's it's just after 10 hardcore stupid retarded leftist view if you publish one right wing view and you say that okay we are balanced that's not going to happen you know so the so the balance of narrative was already so imbalanced that you don't need neutral platform to counterpoise you need equally should i say you know biased platform you know so so what you consider as neutral is not neutral to to show the true true bias you need a counterpoise so that was the idea of starting uh, some uh, you know uh, of it uh, fact checking media reports obviously became a a good tool to expose uh, you know the left leftist bias as well as the incompetence of the mainstream media so uh, so that was but the idea was you know to start with not uh, focus on uh, attacking media ha huh, that one thing was very clear that we would do to journalists what journalists do to others you know so so you 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 make them the center of our news so many many of our news reports talk about you know these celeb journalist you would never nobody, nobody you know media is like uh, except for radia controversy when open magazine and outlook put uh, these guys on uh, cover they wouldn't talk about themselves right so somebody needs to talk about them as well mm. because media is the most unaccountable pillar of democracy you know yeah. like you call uh, yourself the fourth pillar of democracy and the rest three the uh, judiciary executive and legislature you want them to be more and more transparent more and more inclusive and more and more accountable and media is going just the opposite you know it's less and less transparent less and less inclusive you know i mean like over the years they have completely shut down a particular point point of view that's that's why it gives uh, uh, that's what gave scope for something like op india and completely unaccountable so about accountability obviously we can't do anything nothing uh, uh, i mean that's uh, beyond the scope of op india but it's the inclusiveness thing that we are trying to uh, address by giving uh, you know by airing uh, opinions that would be otherwise be shut down by the mainstream uh, the left uh, le- media okay now uh there can't be a discussion uh, with you and even sandeep in that matter and if we don't discuss social media hmm. because th- as you had mentioned there is definitely an asymmetry hmm. uh in when it comes to sharing opinions about subjects like i always say you know tv channel abhi main to dekhta nahi hu magar jab pehle dekha karte the to kaise hota hai jaise ancient cultures ke relics hote hain museum mein तो हमारे टीवी चैनल्स भी वैसे ही हैं जैसे इफ यू गो टू अमेरिका यू नो द नेटिव अमेरिकन कल्चर इज लाइक दैट रिलिक सो यू नो पीपल हु रिप्रेजेंटेड द बीजेपी राइट विंग आरएसएस और यू नो द इकोनॉमिक राइट विंग द नॉन लेफ्ट ओपिनियन वाज लाइक द म्यूजियम पीस ऑन टीवी जैसे बरखा दत्त का भी मेरे को याद है मैं चैनल देखता था बहुत साल पहले तो उसमें ऑब्वियसली अर्नब तो हैज गॉन लाइक ही हैज एट फेसेस बट बरखा दत्त के डिस्कशन में यूजुअली चार से पांच फेसेस होते थे और चार फेसेस were speaking in one voice right. and there was this one museum piece mm. who would speak other or us mm. matlab obviously so the amount of time and the footage so i agree with you there is an asymmetry right. when it comes to the national uh, right. level discourse whether you know, the, the true center is hidden yeah because the you know they have deliberately what, what is left is being presented as center in yes, yes yes so yes so b- because of this asymmetry yeah now now in comes social media obviously mere hmm. hisab se 7 8 se twitter hmm. facebook 9 9 yeah, right. yeah. se take off hmm. hona shuru hota hai and uh, it's exploded i mean hmm. i think even i mean politicians ko to puchoge to wo to whatsapp ki baat karte hain aajkal hmm. uh, so now you have this digital medium definitely a huge amount of this asymmetry has been hit now hmm. 
mm. by websites like yours mm. and twitter i mean obviously you you are very uh, mm. very vocal on twitter sandeep is vocal i am not shame mm. on me uh, <laughs> uh, now in in such a scenario you have clickbait see you mm. are a digital animal mm. now you guys are hard core digital animals mm. i mean you actually literally breathe that mm. what i have views on clickbait do you think it's good it's bad or it's a necessary evil uh so that's my question basically ah uh, before clickbait actually i would like to correct you that uh, you know social media has taken off and all that it, it doesn't mean anything <laughs> you know the, the the narrative and the media still is being controlled by the same left liberal establishment so you know what if you think that a couple of websites like op india has changed anything no we are far 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 away from that that position where we can actually you know claim that we have made uh, that that the balance has been restored which the balance which was never there frankly you yeah. know so so true center being reflected that has not happened because uh, on social media the only thing that it has done is that people people can now say things that were earlier thrown you know censored by uh, the mainstream media that doesn't mean that suddenly the balance has been uh, re- uh, no, i don't want to use the term restored but ba- balance has been discovered it's not it's it's hugely asymmetry even now you know like uh, i i corrected a couple of guys uh, uh, making mockery of ndtv when they tweeted out that we are the number one uh, you know uh, digital news uh, sent uh, destination now obviously ndtv uh, as television is struggling they are not even in top 5 top 5 or top 6 especially their english news channel but on digital they are huge and when when they claim that they are number one they are actually number one they are behind only times of india wow right so so there is no i mean just because there are some thousands of people who are commenting who would otherwise be not allowed to comment on the traditional platforms that doesn't mean something has changed you know for using a, a term that often the sjw's the social justice warriors use that when you are accustomed to privilege uh, or what, what what do they say even even uh, justice Equality looks as oppression yeah like oppression. right so so it, the same thing is happening over there they are accustomed to being the super censors who are who who just have their own way who won't allow a particular narrative to be heard and just because some people have started speaking they suddenly it looks like oppression they are trolls aage khatam kar rahe hain post truth ye ho gaya wo ho gaya kuch nahi hua hai you know like 10% bhi nahi hua hai abhi to ye or i don't know i mean now they are uh, they, they have gone back to the controlling ways google has uh, capitulated uh the youtube videos i was just uh, looking at a youtube video of uh, uh, cultural marxism uh, some person had uploaded it was uh, uh, reported abuse and you had to click 3 4 times and then you could see the video the monetization was disabled you know facebook has started censoring thing twitter removing blue ticks and all that uh, suspending or oh, did you see the latest uh, video expose right. on twitter right right that that obviously is the jokey fella right so it's absolutely ridiculous if somebody believes that social media has has uh, you know the really the funny thing is uh, twitter is censoring conservative voices twitter is uh, shadow blocking conservative uh, users and yet people from the left are protesting against twitter for letting donald trump operate a twitter account <laughs> <laughs> yeah they don't even want conservative politicians to have twitter accounts right. that is the uh, you know they want a right. single playing field and <laughs> funny thing because the moment this video came out uh, i got an email from gab that ha ah, right <laughs> <laughs> uh, still time to switch no uh, but you know what has happened with gab right gab is not allowed on the I- iphone uh, yeah, yeah, operating so, system so that's what i'm saying you know th- the these system, system, right th- this system. why was mainstream media able to dominate and censor because you know the the entrance cost entry barrier was very high you could not start a, a television channel or a newspaper immediately but you could start your own twitter account or your own uh, website very very easily yeah. that's what they are trying to change you know if you if you try to have your twitter account we will shut it down if you try to have your website we will malign you we will you know make it uh, somehow you know discredited or whatever so come on it's just 
थ्री टू थ्री इयर्स वेयर दे फेल्ट लिटिल डिस्कम्फर्ट एक छोटा सा कांटा लग गया चिल्लाया कि जैसे कि पता नहीं जेनोसाइड हो गया और क्या एंड दे आर नाउ बैक टू कंट्रोलिंग एवरी थिंग यू नो सो गूगल फेसबुक ट्विटर ऑल द्री जायट्स दे हैव सिंपली कैपिटुलेटेड टू दीज गाइज सो आई कंप्लीटली डोंट बाई दैट एनी थिंग हैज चेंज तीन साल का उनके लिए ऊपर नीचे का वो प्रॉब्लम था जैसे पांच साल के लिए वाजपेयी आया था और चला गया वैसे ही ये तीन चार साल के लिए ट्विटर आया था एंड दे आर प्रोटी श्योर की वो इसको भी हटा देंगे ट्विटर फेसबुक सब पे उनका ही वापस कंट्रोल हो जाएगा सो आई डोंट नो इवन आई हैटन योर ओरिजिनल क्वेश्चन that's a very different thing, you know, because we I started talking ideology. Uh, click bait, uh, I mean... Uh, come on if somebody has to earn he has to do it <laughs> so you know if you don't get the traffic you don't get the dollars you, you know, how do you survive so already uh, digital at least digital news is unviable business let me tell you so uh, in in current scenario you know if if something if the whole industry uh, figures out a way to survive that's a different matter but currently digital news cannot survive just of its own द वे इट्स हैपनिंग तो थोड़ा क्लिक वेट तो करने दो कुछ पैसे तो आ जाए नो सो वाई आई डिड आस्क यू द क्वेश्चन अबाउट क्लिक बेट एंड एंड इट्स एक्चुअली वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू रेस द आइडियोलॉजी एंड द कंट्रोल पॉइंट ऑल्सो दैट नाउ वट आई सी इन अमेरिका इज एटलीस्ट आई मीन ऑब्वियसली द इंटरनेट इंडस्ट्री ओवर देयर इन टर्म्स ऑफ पेनिट्रेशन मार्केट पेनिट्रेशन इज इन कंपेरेबल टू इंडिया बट ना द वे आउट इन अमेरिका इज आई गिव यू एन एग्जाम्पल it all uh, patreon.com so patreon is a crowdsourcing platform now recently there was this issue where lauren sadan she is one of those people you know who goes out and wo shoot karegi ek jagah pe aur fir kuch to hua tha usne kuch refugees aa rahe the uske kuch video mein uski jo shooting thi apparently they were trying to block it so patreon deplatformed her और वहां से पूरा हुआ तो वॉट आई नोटिस वॉज पीपल लाइक सैम हैरिस अभी सैम हैरिस के पास तो कोई इशू है नहीं सैम हैरिस वॉज ऑन पेट्री ऑन टू सैम हैरिस लिटरली हैज नाउ गॉन इन टू द एक्सटेंट ऑफ एवरी थिंग इज सोर्स थ्रू हिज वेबसाइट नाउ सो यू आई मीन ही इनफैक्ट पेट्री ऑन हैड टू रिक्वेस्ट हिम टू कम बैक ऑन पेट्री ऑन दैट हाउ बिग सैम हैरिस इज बट द पॉइंट इज देन इसका एक ही मुझे तो सोल्यूशन एक ही लगता है कि पीपल पीपल हैव टू पे फॉर कंटेंट आई मीन I mean, I am someone who actually genuinely voluntarily pays for content. I'll be very open. I am a contributor, voluntary contributor to Sam Harris, Dave Rubin. Mm. I am searching for Indian websites to contribute. You can transfer money to me. वैसे नहीं है website बना website पे रख. So that that that's why I'm and you know I have no, I mean I have trolled you on Twitter about this. Right. Like why aren't you? मतलब what, what what stops Op India from even letting voluntary donations from genuine supporters to not come through and or why why what, what is the hitch according to you <laughs> okay this is a sensitive topic <laughs> uh, many people have actually you know asked us uh, they have offered voluntary donations that you know you accept uh, donations uh, maybe later on we could do it uh, however you know there are two reasons why we uh, we, do, uh, we haven't started uh one obviously are is uh, you know like legal and all that we need a proper uh, maybe a trust kind of a thing where donation goes or uh, you, you know those things are so logistics and practical problems are there the second the philosophical issue that i had with it was that people in india especially on the right are too emotional okay <laughs> you know now today they you, you like some one article on it and you know you donate it tomorrow if there is slightly different viewpoint Uh, you would, i mean i'm not saying that you know it's wrong everyone has a right to be uh, disappointed with something or anything like that or oh, they would start saying yaar maine to bekari tere ko donate kar diya paise wapas kar <laughs> you know so i i don't want to go into you know th- with uh, this kind of thing thirdly uh, okay i said too but i the th- the third reason is there are very few people who pay you know it's it's whether right or left it's not about that It, that uh, you know culture of paying for content still hasn't come and especially you know it's a double whammy when you are on internet because on internet the the information is supposed to be free that's how wikipedia and all that started you mm. know more uh, 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 one of the central philosophies 
behind uh, rooting for uh, net neutrality is the same that you know that you that you cannot ask for more thing to charge something else information and data access shouldn't be you know it should be treated equally and on on basic basic level information knowledge should be free i think wikipedia's uh, or once someone's even tagline is this knowledge has to be free or something like that so people come so internet has made that mentality already that thing should be free here you are already accustomed to having content for free so with with th- these two things how do you expect people to pay I, i i do realize that there are people like you and there are people who offer donations voluntary donations they can pay uh, but it uh, frankly i don't think it can sustain a website in operational level uh, the wire and all that they can get money is completely different thing you know uh, we we can have another chat about that how do they manage and all that and how these people can raise money uh but uh, donations uh, people paying for content definitely is something that has to be done in some way if if the digital news websites have to uh, survive but currently i'm not doing it uh, uh, because i'm not sure about the numbers that it can sustain it and uh, once we find some other ways of revenue generation uh, you know like we have never uh, focused on monetization then we can think about that but i don't want to be this the primary thing because i am damn sure that this cannot sustain it of itself okay how about this then uh, message to the listeners once you listen to this podcast how about people who want to pay rahul start messaging rahul on his twitter handle no 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 i have already uh, once i had uh, jokingly put my upi id and people actually transferred some money so i don't want to con them again <laughs> <laughs> so that's 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 not uh, you know uh, but uh, let's see the thing is uh, uh, digital news uh, thing is going through almost the same crisis the way music industry uh, you know went through when internet happened and you know all those cds and uh, before that cassettes and all that happened so distribution channel has been completely changed mm-hmm. you know so when when your distribution is uh, uh news media started with the distribution platform being the newspaper now you have a this con- content had a monopoly over that uh, format mm. right nothing else you can consume on daily printed paper except news you won't have porn daily right you won't have jokes daily mm. you want it's only news so they had the monopoly mm. news industry had a monopoly on that uh, distribution platform mm. so a news paper knew what are its costs Mm. and they could work back and define that okay per square inch this will be the ad rate mm. so that they can sustain their things correct yeah, right now when you come on uh, digital the cpm rates have already been long defined uh, by yahoo's and amazons and all that mm. you know the news was actually a late entrant on onto the digital thing all those big names and all that uh, they were very late to realize that internet has happened mm. right and now when news has come on internet the advertising rates have already been decided by somebody else some other technologies mm. so that monopoly that you enjoyed on uh, news uh, that distribution platform the printed platform that is gone so that's why i'm saying it's unviable mm. you know unless so so if you if you uh, go with the same mentality of uh, business of journalism which was on print or even on a, uh, on uh, 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 television which is usually regulated this is a completely different animal so you have to figure out a new way a new business model i am not sure how it happens so, so sandeep basically digital content can only survive with uh, people who have deep pockets uh not exactly uh, see i have been having this discussion long before i actually joined the uh, media uh, eventually it has to come down to subscription model you have to find that selected pocket which will pay for your content and you will cater to that content only but so far in, um, uh, uh, see earlier we believed in india nobody will pay for anything but now after uh, uh, netflix or star yeah, yeah i was just going to say people are paying amazon, right amazon prime it shows mm-hmm. that indians will pay for selected content uh, the content that they like so hopefully news industry as well over a period of time because nobody has exactly tried a uh, uh, firewall so far in india uh, paid firewall so rajya does <laughs> and we have no, no, it's not so, laughing matter we have actually got some but it's again it's not a huge number that you know sustain can entire operation yeah, so yeah. Uh, let's see if a, a 
big media house tries it once they try it everyone will of course bhed chal to apan karte hi hai to if it works for one then it will move towards that direction that is the only solution because otherwise uh, even in ad space uh, uh, banner ads have run their course nobody wants banner ads on their websites everywhere ads everywhere wo yahoo radif ne kama liya usse wo jitta bhi tha and even earlier media houses but uh, now that people don't want ads people want quality content then they will have to pay eventually uh, you know that subscription model has to kick in and let's see how it kicks in because one of the big media houses has to take that gamble to you know i'll tell you why i agree with you on this is because see now in a way i am also a content producer now yeah. with my podcast i am generating content and नो व्हेन आई स्टार्टेड मुझे लगा पांच लोग भी नहीं सुनेंगे मुझे मेरा एक जेन्युइन बिलीफ था मैं को सिर्फ बच्चों दी करनी थी इसके लिए मैंने ये चालू कर दिया मगर नाउ आई आई नोटिस दैट आर देयर आर पीपल हु एक्चुअली लाइक दैट आई एम नॉट आइडियोलॉजिकली हाइडिंग वेयर आई कम फ्रॉम और दूसरा दे लाइक द फैक्ट दैट आई गो आफ्टर पीपल मेरे को फर्क नहीं पड़ता है कुछ तो एक्चुअली पीपल व्हाट आई नोटिस इज पीपल आर क्रेविंग सैनिटी नाउ I'm sure there is an ideological echo chamber on every side. Yeah. Now there might be an ideolog. The left definitely has it. Mm-hmm. Even our side has an ideological yeah, sure. echo chamber. There might be some people, you know, who might be attracted to only economics. There might be some people who who, who might only be attracted to you know religious things or stuff like that. There could be people enough people in that who are willing to pay. <clears throat> I think a major chunk of right wing money goes into temples. <laughs> <laughs> no i mean i this is just my assessment i think wo mandiron ka thoda paisa agar digital platforms aur isme aayega i think there is a future for these things otherwise theek hai twitter free platform mein chillate raho subah se lekar sham tak kuch nahi hai tumhare paise nahi lag rahe usme theek hai baki end game kya hai mujhe nahi pata but let's see anyways so we've crossed the one hour mark so hmm. I guess we'll have to wrap okay, things up. Okay, I'll just say one last thing. Bolo, bolo. Uh, Twitter is a dying platform. Don't rely too much on it. So, किस पे जाना चाहिए? Oh yeah, on that note, uh, you should tell uh, people that perhaps Gappistan definitely is the only person in India and maybe in the entire world who has voluntarily given away his blue tick. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he changed, you know, he did a lot of things. He changed his username that allows, you know, that makes your blue tick disappear. Hmm. So while Twitter is thinking that oh, to right winger, I take a blue tick. Let me tell you, isn't it blue tick? Fake dia. So you should have actually interviewed. You should interview. You know, big media companies should interview him. Yeah. Meet the person who threw away his blue tick. Ah. So. मतलब तो तुमने ये तुमने वाला तू क्या मेरा blue tick निकालेगा ये ले मैं छोड़ता हूँ. Yeah. And, and now that he has said, you know, more than ideology, he believes that it's a dying platform. So वहाँ पे ट्रोलिंग एंड अब्यूजेस ऑन दैट साइड गुड बाय